Hey y'all, welcome back to another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today we're going to be shooting Norma Bond Strike 180 grain and 308 Winchester. And here's that box for the Norma Bond Strike 180 grain 308 Winchester load. First thing I want to point out is they have an elk right here on the box. So as far as I can tell, that's sort of what this ammo is meant for. Sort of larger medium game. Coming around to the back, we have all of your promo information for the Bond Strike line. Feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like to. Flipping it around, let's take a look at stated velocity. It looks like it's stating 2,625 feet per second at the muzzle. We'll see how close we get to that out of the 22-inch barrel of my Ruger American. We'll go ahead and pop this open and pull some out and take a look. And Norma Ammo comes in these little polymer plastic ammo holders. Something that I like to point out every time is these are apparently emergency fire starters. You can light the edge of this and they'll just sort of burn nice and slow and help you start a fire. So that's pretty cool. I think that's on Norma's YouTube channel. But also you can crack these in half and you have two little five round holders you can slip in your pocket in your pack or something like that. It's actually pretty darn handy. And I'll go ahead and pull one out. You have to push down right here and push up and then you can pop them out. And here it is, super clean, nice and streamlined looking blue tip. And something that I do wanna point out is I believe the 30-06 Bond Strike load was the first ammunition I ballistic gel tested on this channel at all. So this is a cousin to that load. It'll be interesting to see how this compares to the 30-06 version of this same load. Let's go shoot it and see how it does. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Standard, chambered in 308 Winchester, of course. It has a 22-inch barrel. I did have it threaded so I could use a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor. And coming on back, I've got it topped off with a Vortex Diamondback 4 to 16 by 42 scope. Definitely helps see the gel blocks down there. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on the buttstock. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings on there. Those are also available on my website. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my white-tailed deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are those velocities for the Norma Bond Strike 180 grain load in 308. We had a minimum of 2552, a maximum of 2589 for an average of 2573. And we are down at the blocks after firing that Norma Bond Strike 180 grain load out of the 308 Winchester. And we did capture all three bullets. First, let's talk about penetration. And it looks like we got 22 and a half inches, right about 23 and a half inches. And then this deepest one is, we'll call it 20, eh, the back end is about 26 and a half. We'll call that 26 and a half inches. And it does look like we got some very good expansion on these. They also look like they held together very well. And coming on over to the first block, we'll try and take a look at the wound cavities here. So they pencil in right here, start to expand at about the one and a half to two inch mark open up, open up, open up, open up, and then taper off by about the 12 inch mark, maybe 11 inch mark where it starts to really taper off. Pretty par for the course for medium big game hunting ammo. And this load also, it's kind of hard to tell because the three wound tracks are fairly close together which is unfortunately I kind of have to do that to make sure I capture the bullets. I'll come over to the front of the block. When I fire at this block, keep in mind I'm 100 yards away and if I could I would shoot you know one here one here and one there exactly perfectly. That's a lot easier said than done. So sometimes the wound tracks are gonna be close together, which makes them a little bit tougher to analyze. But nevertheless, the wound track from these bond strikes is a little bit narrower than say Federal Fusion. I just tested those um, earlier today, actually. I'm not sure when the video came out. But what I think that means is the bullet comes in and expands just more controlled, not super explosive right up front, but in a more controlled manner. 
And so we don't just see the initial massive huge cavity up front like you do with some other ammo. But like anything, there's a trade-off. And with these, we got the penetration. So let's go ahead and dig them out and take a look. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and hit the metrics for that Norma Bond Strike 180 grain load out of the 308 Winchester. I've got the bullets pulled out of the blocks and cleaned up, weighed up and measured. So let's go ahead and hit it. Weight retention wise, 159 grains, 165 grains, and another at 165 grains for an average of 163 grains retained weight that works out to 91% weight retention, which from what I've seen is actually on the lower end for bonded bullets. Typically with a bonded bullet, you'd see a little bit higher weight retention, but we're still in that 90% plus range, so I'm pretty darn happy with it. So on to expansion. We saw 0.8 inches, 0.82 inches, and 0.88 inches for an average of 0.83 inches expanded diameter, and that works out to 2.7x expansion. This bond strike stuff across calibers that I've tested seems to expand very, very violently and rapidly and get really big. Just take a look at these bullets here. It's not the most uniform expansion. For example, with Federal Fusion, it's typically very uniform. The whole thing around the whole circumference is expanded about the same. Bond strike is a little bit more variable and violent. They're still all very large, and this stuff is gonna create one heck of a nasty wound track. And now on to velocity. Our high velocity was 2590, our low was 2553 for an average of 2574 versus the factory spec velocity of 2625 feet per second. So we did come in a bit slow versus factory spec 51 feet per second slow. Definitely not the worst I've seen. I've seen a lot worse than that. And yes, I was shooting this out of a 22 inch barrel. It is by far the most common barrel length for 308 Winchester and hunting rifles, bar none. And yes, I'm aware that factories use longer barrels than that, which makes no sense. And I have to bring it up because someone in the comments always says it. Well, what if you got a slow barrel? Well, I don't because I've had several other loads actually exceed factory spec velocity from the same rifle. And at the end of the day, velocity is really the last thing that I'm worried about. And now onto my new metric that I've just started including, impact velocity. So how fast is this bullet going when it actually impacts the ballistics gel down there at 100 yards? Now I don't have a chronograph down there. This is based off of a mathematical calculation, but it should be very, very close. So my estimate for impact velocity of this ammo is 2,300 and 94 feet per second down there at 100 yards. Just something to know. And by the way, it's based off of factory provided specs. I'm not just making up a formula here. Before somebody says, oh, well, there's no way it could slow down that much. Yeah, they, they drop velocity pretty quick. 2,574 feet per second at the muzzle is not 2,574 feet per second at 100 yards. And then on to penetration. This stuff did pretty darn good. We've seen deeper in 308 Winchester, but considering the massive expansion, it penetrated pretty good. We saw 22 and a half inches, 23 and a half inches, and 26 and a half inches for an average of 24 inches of penetration. Now the most comparable load I've tested that would be similar to this would be Federal Terminal Ascent. It did penetrate a bit deeper on average, but this expanded quite a bit more on average, so Take that for what it's worth and choose your ammo accordingly. But this ammo definitely is starting to approach that range where I would consider it for larger medium game. Stuff like what is represented on the box here, they've got a picture of an elk. Would I use it on elk? Yeah, I would. And then real quick kinetic energy with a 180 grain bullet going on average 2,574 feet per second, we're looking at 2,648 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Norma Bond Strike 180 grain load out of the 308 Winchester. Y'all, I really like Bond Strike. I'm actually a big fan. I think for what it is and what it's supposed to do, it performed very well. Now there's sort of a caveat with Bond Strike. Now that I've tested enough ammo, enough different kinds of ammo, that I'm coming to realize and, and, and willing to say here, it does tend to expand a lot more rapidly and violently than some of your other ammo that is meant more for your large or medium game getting into the large game category, you know, elk and on up. This stuff expands rapidly. It expands a lot more rapidly and a lot more violently than, say, Federal Terminal Ascent, another comparative type of ammo. But also keep in mind we're doing these tests at 100 yards and right here on the box, on the normal Bond Strike box, it says verbatim 
long range hunting. So this stuff is marketed for longer range shots, your Western hunting where your shots are probably gonna be a bit further, definitely out past 100 yards. One day, hopefully, if I can expand my range, I just don't have the facilities to do it right now. Hopefully I can test this ammo at extended distances, 200, 300, 500 yards, and see what it does when it gets way out there. Because based on its 100 yard performance, I think it would actually do arguably better at extended ranges, which is what it is marketed for. But what I really like is that it still performs really well at 100 yards. It's not just a long range ammo. It can hold its own at closer range too. So what would I use this stuff for? Well, you know, exactly what it's marketed for. I would be totally satisfied using this stuff for elk, especially if I was probably gonna have a little bit longer shot where the expansion might not be so violent and I might get a bit more penetration out of the stuff. Stuff. But even if I had an elk step out a hundred yards or closer, I wouldn't feel undergunned or like I had the wrong kind of ammo if this is what was in my magazine. I'd be totally happy with it. And I also think this stuff would perform exceptionally well on your typical medium game, your white-tailed deer, your mule deer, some of your sheep and goats and stuff like that. I think it would just do excellent for just about everything across the board. I'm a big fan of this stuff. Also, in every rifle that I've shot this stuff out of, it tends to be very, very accurate. I'll be doing accuracy videos in the future, but rest assured, Norma Bond Strike is some of the most precise stuff out there in terms of factory hunting ammo. I mean, it just lays them in there. So that's what I think about it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.